Hi everyone, in today's video we'll take a look at how you can use TensorFlow inside of a Docker container. It's really simple to get started, um, however the prerequisite for this video assumes that you already have Docker running on your machine. If not, um, you'll find a link to um, uh, another video that I've created uh, to show you how you can install Docker on Ubuntu. Uh, so feel free to pause the video, install Docker first if you don't have it already. Uh, so to get started, we'll be going through two examples. Uh, so um, the first one is a really simple um, example of how you can kickstart a TensorFlow container. Uh, again, you'll find these uh, commands in the description of the video. So let's start off with the first command here. So let's copy that and on my console and paste. So basically what we are doing is uh, we are creating a new container uh, from this uh, image, uh, from this image TensorFlow, and in my case, the command obviously ran um, uh, immediately because I had already downloaded the uh, image in advance. But if you don't already have the image, you'll find that this uh, command takes a while to download that image and then kick off the container. And uh, essentially, what we are doing is uh, we are port forwarding. 8888 uh, from the container to our local host and this is for Jupyter Hub and uh, once you run that you'll find um, that you have that link here so let's uh, click on that link and uh, there you have it uh, you have a ready to play uh, Jupyter notebook uh, with uh, TensorFlow pre-installed and um, the good folks at TensorFlow have um, provided some getting started examples that uh, you could uh, work with. Uh, so if you open one of the uh, notebooks here, uh, again, I'm assuming you're familiar with uh, Jupyter Hub notebooks. If not, it'll take you some time to get acquainted with it. Um, but again, um, I'm, I'm going to assume uh, the fact that you've already got familiarity with uh, Jupyter Hub. Uh, so th you should be right at home uh, running these notebooks. Uh, so that's a really simple example of how you can um, use Docker uh, to quickly get started using TensorFlow. Again, this video is not intended to be an overview of TensorFlow either. So uh, again, it's uh, the assumption is you uh, you have some familiarity with TensorFlow and would like to get started using Docker containers. Anyway, this was a really simple example. However, uh, moving ahead, just wanted to highlight that. There are a few uh, things uh, which are fairly limiting just with running the container this way. Uh, so uh, normally what I would do is um, uh, for my workflow, this is uh, kind of uh, uh, the command I would use. Uh, so again, it's just a recommendation and you might find it handy. Uh, so a couple of different or extra parameters here. So um, I'm the RM suggests that you, uh, the containers will get removed once you stop it. Um, I'd like to give it a friendly name, which I can recognize, and um, basically share um, a folder from my host machine into uh, the container. Uh, and additionally, uh, when working with TensorFlow, I would like to use uh, TensorBoard. Uh, so in addition to uh, the Jupyter Hub um, port, I'm also forwarding the port that's exposed by TensorBoard. And finally, we'll take a look at how you can actually run TensorBoard and uh, uh, get that, um, uh, you know, access that on your local machine uh, through the browser. So let's actually stop this container. Um, so let me just cancel that and click yes. All right, so that stopped, uh, but um, we, the problem, or one of the problems with uh, when it doesn't get removed automatically is um, okay, if I run PSA, you'll notice that uh, we still have this container, uh, I mean, uh, an older running container, uh, which is currently stopped. Uh, so let me um, remove that and clean that up. Uh, Docker, let's remove that, force it, and Okay, so that gets rid of um, all the older containers. And now, if I go back and copy this, oops, I'm, let me copy that correctly this time. Hmm. Okay, it looks like I've forgotten how to do basic copy and paste, control C. And let me cancel that and 
there we go finally all right so if I run this this time around um, and again I'll explain this in a bit more detail so I have a folder in my machine that's my work uh, it's in the, my home directory and basically what it's got it's uh, it's got some files here so this is a good example of how uh, I can share files uh, between um, the container and my host machine so uh, for example if I go back here and uh, let me copy hello world as hello world uh, 2 for example and you'll notice that it actually comes up here um, from as you can see in Jupyter Hub uh, which is running within the container so it's really handy uh, to uh, keep files um, once your container has been deleted or uh, more importantly for situations like uh, in your github workflow for example uh, you can perform all your github um, um, basic flows from within your host computer and work um, within your docker container so that's uh, typically how I would run that um, so here again let's um, let's run this um, uh, Jupyter hub uh, notebook again so nothing fancy about this so I'm just running it uh, here and uh, while that's running uh, let's actually kickstart um, uh, the the tensor board so uh, if you're familiar with uh, TensorFlow, uh, you may have also come across TensorBoard, which uh, provides a nice uh, GUI visual um, layer, if you will, that allows us to inspect what's going on uh, inside of TensorFlow. So for us to um, use TensorBoard, um, I'm going to run this command next. Uh, so let me copy that. And again, you remember one of the benefits of uh, providing a name uh, for your containers that we can reference that here. So this uh, TF is the name of the running container. So if I do uh, docker ps, uh, it'll list our, uh, docker ps. So you'll notice that these are the running containers and uh, this is the name of the container. All right, so let's get rid of that. And if I run this here, again, copy and paste that all right so now behind the scene it's actually running tensorboard and uh, this is uh, the information that uh, the, uh, you get from the container indicating that it's running on port 6006 and fortunately we have already port forwarded that in advance so now if I look at port 606 You'll find that it uh, loads up uh, TensorBoard in just a bit. Uh, this is the first time we are accessing TensorBoard, so it's a bit slow. But um, there again, you'll notice that uh, we now have um, uh, TensorFlow uh, running and TensorBoard um, also accessible from your host computer. Uh, so that wraps it up for this quick video on how to use uh, TensorFlow with Docker. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.